Hey, moving athletes. Today, we'll take a quick look at the scapular pull exercise. This is an exercise to help aid in front lever work. So we'll first start by hanging on the bar and lifting our body to a horizontal position. And to do this, we first need to retract the scapula before we enter into this position. Let's take a look at what this position and exercise looks like from the beginning. Let's do one more. Okay. So what you can see Blake doing is retracting his scapula, squeezing his shoulders together, down and together in the back. He's trying to pull the bar towards his hips, reach this horizontal position, keeping uh, his hips open rather than an anterior pelvic tilt, which maybe can lead to an arch body or a, a piking in the hips. We're also staying away from lifting the legs as the driving force by maintaining the posterior pelvic tilt and engaging the lower back. So the body should stay fixed. We're going into a straddled position. This of course could be tucked, open tuck, straddled, and eventually straight position. So this is one of the intermediate type positions here. Let's take one more look from the backside and we'll see what the back, upper back and shoulders are doing as Blake lifts into this. You'll see his shoulders come down together in the back. So we're looking right in here. Excellent. Now the scapula should be in a neutral position, which means you're not gonna be completely retracted and you're not gonna be protracted, but somewhere in between to hold this uh, front lever-like position and as you get into it and out of it. So that's our quick tutorial on the scapular pulls and this should help you on your road to the front lever. Let's take a look at what some of the incorrect positions might be that are common. So one of them being uh, kicking with the legs and showing a slight pike in the hips. Maybe there's also an anterior pelvic tilt, which is a lower back arch, rather than the flat, uh, straight position in the hips. But definitely the piking in the hips is a big common one we see. Okay, so you can see he's almost, he's basically picking up momentum from the kick of his legs. And too piked, the body's too bent, is what I mean by that when I say piked. Okay, now if this is you, it would be wise to take a step back, go to maybe a tucked lever, where you're not driving upwards with your legs for momentum. You want to initiate this completely from the upper body by using the shoulders and upper back and then pushing down on the bar rather than lifting with momentum. Um, and now another piece could be that you're not retracting your uh, shoulders enough. You might be hanging and just trying to get into this by pushing backwards without pulling the shoulders back and together. Let's take a quick look at what that might be. You might get stuck in it. It's definitely a lot harder. Okay, so this is Blake not retracting his shoulders, and you can see pretty much all of his body weight is in front of his hands, and you can't counterbalance. You need some body weight behind your hands to be in this front lever-like position. So this is what a few of the common errors can look like. Not retracting the scapula enough, not maintaining the posterior pelvic tilt, and kicking too much with the legs, or maybe you are piked and using momentum. So that's a quick recap on what the scapular pulls should look like and what they should not look like. Thank you. One thing that we've realized from training thousands of calisthenics athletes is that if your training is not personalized, it can hinder your progress, leave you injured, stuck, or plateaued. With the movement athlete, instead of having the beginner, intermediate, and advanced exercises, we have exercises that'll be tailored specifically to you. It's also important to be well-rounded with your training. For example, some people have really strong legs. They might have weaker arm pulling muscles or are lacking the shoulder mobility for handstands. You are a unique individual and your levels of strength, mobility, and flexibility are different from everyone else's and your training should reflect that. If you want to build skills, get stronger, and do it in a holistic way that will keep you healthy for years and help reduce injury, you've got to personalize your training. But the reality with personal training is that it can be pretty pricey and it's often not available for what you want. And that's why we created the Movement Athlete Assessment.